Hello and welcome back. And that is right, it is for, um, time for another Should You Buy. This is five reasons why you consider buying this, the new QNAP HS264, and five reasons why you might want to give it a miss. Let's cut straight on with number one. This first point is going to be so obvious. It's a silent NAS. Let's be honest, a number of you that have been looking at network attached storage systems and maybe you're in a small office or you're running it for home or multimedia, the idea of a NAS that is silent by design is going to be attractive. A number of us are very, much more sensitive than noise than others. And of course, if you are in close proximity, the clicks, hums and whirs of hard drives and indeed fans can get annoying. And this system taking advantage of a heat dissipation panel there on the top alongside a lack of fans there on the rear of it mean it is whisper quiet not just whisper but genuinely silent now it's important to remember just like i mentioned in my full review that it does depend on the drives you use if you are using traditional hard drives like this one these do make their own kind of vibration noises there in the background indeed if you go for more enterprise double hard drives those can be a lot noisier so if you want a truly silent nas like this you're going to have to use 2.5 inch hard drives but nevertheless one of the big things i love about this system is it's legitimately a silent nas Next up, that CPU. That's right, the CPU inside this isn't just a one step better than the 53D series that came before it. This is a bigger jump than most of them arriving with the Intel N5105 or N5095 processor there inside. It is at least a couple of jumps ahead of the J4115 in its predecessor, the HS453DX. To put that into a little bit of perspective there, that CPU not only has a higher frequency there at 2.0 gigahertz, it can be burst up to 2.9 gigahertz, more than the 1.8 to 2.5 of the predecessor but on top of that that cpu also arrives with a greater degree of support of memory inside there and moreover if you look at cpu benchmark the rating is a noticeable degree higher at 4161 over the 2706 of its predecessor ultimately that cpu is what really makes it stand out from its predecessor in a number of key ways That is right, 2.5 GBE. No brand, I don't think at the moment, has really hit 2.5 gigabit Ethernet as much as QNAP. And I'm pleased to say that this system arrives with 2.5 GBE straight out of the box. It's got a couple of ports there, which means link aggregation is still very much possible. And there's two base system that can arrive with, depending on the hard drives or SSDs you use, anywhere between 300 and 700 megabytes per second performance means that these two ports here, whether you're going to be using them together or independently, are going to give you some great bandwidth with which this system is able to saturate. Next up, a largely overlooked area, I would say, by a lot of people of it is that this system arrives with USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. That's right, 10, gigabit, uh, 10 gigabits per second transmission on those means that when you're attaching USBs for local backups on this system or indeed some rather advanced USB peripherals, this system has 1,000 megs per port to play with there. And again, this is something we're seeing with a lot of the more modern releases from QNAP. And on this system, which probably could have got away with not having them on there, given that it's going to have a KVM setup there. It's really impressive that this system has included those. I would have liked to have seen it there on the front for USB backups, I've got to, I've got to say, but overall, I'd rather have them than not have them at all. And this last one is a little bit more about the software, but I do think it's something that's worth touching on overall. A system like this is generally deployed in homes or businesses to be very, very discreet. And a number of users looking at this will take advantage of KVM setups, thanks to those HDMI ports, KVM being keyboard, video, and mouse, and this system for surveillance. Now, for those that aren't aware, NASs like this can be utilized with IP cameras such as this from Reolink. This is the C2 Pro and this camera means that you can dock cameras like this or PoE cameras with an appropriate switch around your home or business environment. Now, most NASs that you purchase have the software included and this has QVR Pro, which has got some AI stuff thrown in and more. But on top of that, it allows you to attach these cameras to a finite degree. Most systems arrive with camera licenses. What that means is that you can attach a certain number of cameras completely for free and then have to pay to add additional cameras with said licenses. Why is that relevant and why is it a plus? This system arrives with support of eight cameras straight out of the box. So you can use eight of thousands of supported cameras and not have to spend a penny extra. There are other systems out there that arrive with support of just two cameras by default. And having that enterprise-grade surveillance platform and having those cameras up to eight 
out on the default setup is surely something that a lot of surveillance users are going to be very appealed by in the tremendous saving versus having to pay for those licenses. But of course it can't all be good news and with five reasons why I think you should consider this NAS or of course five reasons why I think you should give it a miss. Now, for those that aren't aware, this is a follow-up to the NAS, the HS453DX. But moreover, this is a NAS that's actually part of a grander series from QNAP in their 64 series. And despite the 64 series now having about six or seven different units in its family and the predecessors before this, all featuring support of these SSDs, either in NVMe or M2 SSD format, this system doesn't have it, which is a real shame. It's got two storage bays there, starter there for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media, but this system does not include M2 SSD bays in any shape or form, which is a real disappointment given that the predecessor to this in the Silent NAS series had two slots and all the other 64 series support SSDs like this. It's great for storage pools, it's great for Q-tier, it's great for traditional caching. It's just a real shame this system doesn't feature that. Another comparison we have to make against the predecessor, again, that HS453DX, is that this system does not have 10 GBE. Now, I am still really happy with those 2.5 GBE ports. You know, I'm really impressed by them. I like that bandwidth. I like that this two bay isn't gonna limit me, limit me to a couple of one gig ethernet ports. But there's still no avoiding that this system with its better CPU doesn't have 10 gigabit ethernet or those m2 ports that i mentioned earlier on against its predecessor now fair play to it its predecessor is 200 dollars more expensive but still nonetheless it would have been great to see 10 gbe on this more compact and powerful system Now, I mentioned surveillance earlier on, but it is worth touching on multimedia. This system is very popular, the whole silent NAS series, in fact, with multimedia users. It allows them to have a NAS that's going to be a lot more discreet in the noise that it's running without having that fan there running on the background and enjoy their 4K media. And with this device having 4K 60 frames per second output, that is absolutely great stuff. So why is this in the negative part? Well, that in itself isn't negative, but the fact that this system, unlike some of the older QNAPs that arrive with um, audio in and output, and indeed arrive with that remote control, I've talked about it there in the past, this system doesn't have that, despite it being a lot more multimedia geared in some respects. And I think a lot of users that have looked at the previous generations of the multimedia NAS series, and I believe I might be wrong, but I think both of the previous releases in the silent NAS series had remote controls. This system not having it is a real disappointment. Carrying on with the subject of HDMI out, let's talk a little bit about those two there. I touched on this in my review, but let's touch on it again. This system has two 4K 60 frames per second HDMI ports, but you can't use them independently. You can't use one for surveillance and one for your multimedia. You can't use both of them for two different VMs in QVM. You have to only use them to mirror the screen of the other one or having an extended screen, which is such a waste of that architecture there. Now I can appreciate that's something that's probably built into QTS and HD Station, but HD Station is another application in the range of apps on QNAP's platform. And it seems kind of an oversight to me, hopefully someone at QNAP can explain why we can't have two independent outputs on HDMI running different things and different applications and services. Hell, the remote control we mentioned earlier has those different buttons to flick between those different services. They've clearly understood that people like to do lots of different tasks. I just think it would have been a shame if these two ports here could have been used independently rather than in a weird kind of cohabital way. And despite what I think about this device, and I am genuinely impressed by it and its architecture and how much I've liked the previous generations of the Silent NAS unit, I think it would be remiss not to acknowledge that QNAP has had a bit of a bumpy road for the last two to two and a half years. Everything from QLocker to QSnatch and of course being affected by Deadbolt. And although a lot of these ransomware attacks arguably aren't precisely their fault, the handling of these things and the impact on some users needs to be acknowledged. I think at the moment we may be going through something of a redemption period for QNAP where they're going to have to prove that they've you know taken their lumps and learned from their mistakes but I think it would be very remiss not to at least highlight that right now at the start of 2022 there are certain feelings towards the QNAP brand that people want to know that their data is safe and I think until we see real progress on that one it has to be in my cons list but this has been 
five reasons to consider buying the HS264 and five reasons why you might want to give it a miss. If you've enjoyed this video, there's a full detailed review on YouTube. There's a link to it in the description as well as in the comments over on NAS Compares. There is, of course, uh, you can click like down there and it helps you understand what I'm doing right in these videos. Click subscribe to learn more if you talk about more and more NAS series in 2022. And of course, take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares. It's genuinely free. We don't do anything with your email. Couldn't give a stuff about your email. If you want to uh, donate, you can. There's donate buttons. Use them. Ignore them. It's up to you. It's manned by two humans, me and Eddie the web guy. Might take us a day or so to answer your inquiries, but we do answer everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.